this here. Uh, but back down in San Diego doing some of our Comic Con prep. And like last year, I thought we would do a Seaport Village video because there's so much change going on here all the time. Last year, it was one of the videos that kept kind of popping up even like during Comic-Con, like preview night and stuff, people would ask about things about Seaport Village. So it really isn't like one of our main stops, to be honest, when we're down here, but we do come by from time to time and we have noticed there's a lot of things going on down here all the time since the pandemic. Thank you, Carrie Dixon, for this shirt. We've got the blog 10th anniversary shirt, favorite all time blog shirt there. So we're gonna check out, we've noticed a lot of things closing, opening literally in the last 12 months. Just feels like there keeps being movement in this area. Definitely one of the sections amongst many of San Diego that got hit pretty hard. Hello there Alejandro. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. So we'll start out here with a spot and one of the things we found pretty frequent in Seaport Village as with a lot of the spots in just the city in general is closed coming soon closed again coming soon closed again coming soon type stuff and so over here busters beach house they've got the something is new on the horizon but it's been like that actually for quite some time and busters is not with us nor is anything else in this location obviously that could change in the next month as we lead into comic con who knows it could become an off-site activation or something but right now if busters was one of your spots it is gone that said the san pasqual winery still here and one of the places i feel like it's been the most consistently active since the pandemic makes sense there if you've not been over to seaport village before this is right behind the grand hyatt here so you can kind of orient yourself we're behind the hyatt we know we have a lot of people it's gonna be their first year at comic con and so this is where we are at as of right now so we're starting out here on the lighthouse side we're gonna make our way across over here to the carousel district and see everything in between. But as a, for example, as we start out here in the center, as we'll see one of the big spots, Malibu Farm, it's been moved to the coming soon category, but it is not currently looking too close to it, or at least it wasn't when we walked over. So we'll see, it didn't take a, a real strong look at it. We just got in to this area, I don't know, half hour ago. So we'll do a more thorough look now with you all. Carmel is monitoring the chat as well. So if we, and it is quite sunny out here, if you're wondering, it's in the uh, high 70s, very nice, but definitely sunnier than it's been out here. And it actually is a little hard to see some of the comments coming through just because of the glare going back and forth from the changing light. Ben and Jerry's has maintained its spot here. So we still have that next to it a little sock and kind of bracelet shop there i don't see a name for it but ben and jerry's oh wait temporarily closed for repairs so maybe that means just closed for a little bit they do have the carousel location as well but uh maybe getting ready for comic con there island fashion lots of touristy stuff this actually area is one of our favorite places in seaport village just to kind of hang out we often will come here to talk about videos we're going to do or just take breaks or last year we shot the backpack video here so you may recognize it even if you've not been over here before in the back side of busters beach house and again it's pretty well gutted from the looks of it on the outside now this spot i believe was closed our last time being over here and now as you can see it is not so we'll go by there but yeah mostly empty over at busters but here we got mike hess brewing is open and yeah this actually wasn't open last time we were here so t-shirts brewery and there spill the beans coffee and bagel returns intro stem is there not sure it's seaport village studio we to more of the food stuff on the other side here but influencer boutique is here returning from last year I remember because the name really stood out to me influencer boutique if you want to become an influencer i guess that's where you get your clothes Actually, so let's stop here to kind of re-adjust ourselves. So that is the Hyatt. Yep, Robert, your time down here leading up to the con 
hit that influencer boutique and you'll be set. So we're on the back side of the Marriott. There was an awesome interview last night with Cap Media and the unofficial Comic-Con blog talking about all those wraps going up, but we're not seeing anything there yet. And they talked about that when we will be seeing them in the near future there. And that was super exciting. We actually were watching that on the drive down here today. Seaport Market over here, there's a couple spots to pick up like quick snacks, food, sunblock, alcohol, chips, all of those nature. This one, much more focused specifically on alcohol. This is kind of the adults market right here at Seaport Market. And then over here is a little bit more. Uh, actually, it's, wait, is it this side? Yeah. Here in the, oh, no, no. This is the gift shop, Indian Trails. It's this side. Snacks, souvenirs, all of that. It has still here. And it's actually gotten a new paint job since uh, the last convention. You can kind of see that there if you're familiar with the area. Now, another thing to note just in this area, this is one of the handful of places that's outdoors in San Diego gas lamp adjacent area that actually has bathrooms that are accessible for free to everyone. So if you're stuck in a line over this way, if you're finishing up the Dragon Ball offsite and want to make your way over to use a restroom, there are multiple accessible restrooms, which is nice. In fact, there's a sign for one of the restrooms right there, and it's right down there. Now that spot, as you can tell, closed down. You can see the construction on the side. There was a fire over here, so this has not come back to life, and I don't recall what was in there. If anybody knows, you can throw it in the comments there. Another t-shirt shop, the Bay Company. Lots of these, as I said, in here to do all your tourist shopping. But Malibu Farm, this is kind of what got us to thinking of redoing this video again this year because when we did come down here a few weeks ago and we noticed that this spot was still not back. And last year, it was one of those spots that it appeared that it was going to be coming and it thought it'd be okay. And then it just never made its way back. So we'll come a little bit to the side and then we'll go to the front of it. But it is listed, as you saw on the map a little bit earlier, as coming soon. So we will see. But I feel like a broken record on some of these things this year because it's like it looks the same. It's like the, the children's park across the street. I was looking at a photo from last year of one particular spot. And it is identical to a photo we took this year. Yeah, there's the sign from summer 2022. So I don't know not looking very likely right now um next week i think is when we're targeting to do a fifth street and kind of beyond video uh, so we'll post a link to that when we have that all sorted out but we're going to do you know the spaghetti factory area and all of that but there's a couple spots over there that have either closed or we're about to be resuscitated and then went out of business again and so we'll kind of share those that is honestly a lot more our areas like fifth to island and things like that no actually there's somebody this is the first time we've been here and seen activity so maybe they are scrambling to comic con there's a couple trucks there and there's actually people working out front here so see got what 28 days something like that but yeah that's you were witnessing the most activity we've seen at this location in any of our visits to Comic-Con area since 2019. Yeah, it says Malibu Farm, the date posted for this one, March 28th, 2023. So see, it is a big spot. If you've ever been there, it's a big spot. It can take up a lot of people, but uh, wasn't of use last year's Comic-Con. Not sure if it will be this year or not. Geppetto's Toy Shop remains del sol color change this is i think one of the prettiest spots of seaport village and this was again why that restaurant location was great if you got a seat and could look out here on the water stuff like this oh yeah water stuff like this 
is why I think people don't need to worry much about San Diego Comic-Con being okay in the long run of things. It is like heaven on earth down here. As people that don't live here, it is like heaven on earth when we come down here. And I think everybody loves coming and celebrating pop culture in this place. It's tough to beat this environment. All right, something sweet shop. This is a candy shop filled with all sorts of great treats. It's the Mario art. And then you've got your Wetzel's pretzels right there near the water. You can love the waterways in here. Even though it is a lot busier during Comic Con. It's so calming. The paint job is perfect for next month with you. Chad, I hear you. Even where we live, it's about an hour and a half up. And it is always about 15 degrees warmer than it is here. And uh, that makes a big difference. <laughs> it's, it's just not this. San Diego is pretty incredible. Pretty, pretty incredible. All right, we're getting over to the Carousel District side where we have more of the food offerings that are open and remain open. Again, a lot of tourist shops. I mean, if you're looking for t-shirts and hats and things of that nature, this is a great area to hang out in. It's the flag store, Alamo Flags. Oh, and then Santa's Workshop. That was one of the spots I was like, I don't know. You know, with the pandemic, you just don't know what's going to make it after the long closure. And it just seemed like such a niche thing. But they're there. Santa's out. All is well. Or at least well enough on the outside here that they're hanging in there. So that's good to see. Crazy Hat Shop's great for sun hats if you forget yours. Agreed. We've actually gotten a hat or two there before. And it is a great little shop. All right, so Edgewater Barn Grill is still open. This has been a popular San Diego Comic-Con spot over the years. It used to be the spot for the Star Wars fan breakfast back in the day when, like, Fridays were Star Wars Day at Comic-Con. And so although we don't still have Star Wars Day really in any formal sense at Comic-Con, they still remain. They've got their brunch menu each day until 3 p.m. And they don't list a price there, so you have to look it up for the brunch part. Oh, no, actually, they do. I'm sorry. They do have prices next to it. I thought it was a one price thing, but now you can see some of the prices there. As can be expected for those of you coming from far away, prices have gone up on just about everything here, as I'm sure they have wherever you're from. We ate right before coming here, so it's not having the same effect on me, Andrew, but I I hear ya. Yeah, so prices, I mean, it's why honestly, so we eat at Lolita's all the time down here because we love Lolita's, but I gotta be honest also, the last several times we've come down here is because we're like, where can both of us eat for, and it ends up being 25 bucks. And it's like, okay, we can both eat there for 25 bucks and like every place else is like 50 bucks or something, so it's, become even more of a mainstay for us and the, that that makes sense i don't think we've been to a ben and jerry's in a long time although they have the two here but uh i would i believe that louisiana charlie's i believe this is the one last year that was opening i think the last time we did this video i may be incorrect they were either just opening up or were just about to open up and uh they seem to be open doing well they just have seating outside catfish Crab boil, red beans and rice. Yeah, they actually have their alcohol licensing out there. More of the clothing shops. There is the historic carousel. So we are in the carousel. Oh, they were just about to open. Thank you. There's our Ben and Jerry's. Their waffle cone. Sunday, fun day, some of their offerings. 
Here's some of their stuff and their prices. And they've got the Dole Float. All right, across the way over here has been where we usually end up eating when over here somewhere in this section. So we'll make our way around. Uh, over here, I don't recall what was there. I'm not sure if anybody in the comments knows, but all closed down. And then the fudge spot over there, I believe, is also closed down. But the noodle shop, Tuck Tuck Bowls Noodles, they get quite busy. Got some fantastic noodles there. Here's kind of their setup of choose your own in terms of what they offer. Go into the courtyard here. We've got Mr. Moto Pizza right next door. A little bit of indoor seating there. Some of those prices. Bow. That is Tuck Tuck, right? The one we just were looking at, and I don't know if I'm saying that correctly at all, but I believe that was what we were looking at, the noodle. Or it's not, actually it's on this side, I'm sorry. Cruise. Oh, no, no, it's the same. It's the same there. Mike Hess Brewing Company. So we saw Mike Hess move the brewery part over there, but the food seems to remain here. So guessing they're going to keep those two locations. One more for the brewery side. And one more for the food side here in this food court. Marion's seafood combos, bowls, salads, tacos. Thank you. Yeah, so you can still get your bow there. Margarita's Kitchen, Cantina. We ate down here, I think it has been out a year ago now, actually, but this burger spot, it was quite fantastic and really the prices overall seemed and do seem pretty good relative to everything else in the world so you do order your fries separately so you can get a hamburger at eight dollars add on the fries is five dollars you can share those fries obviously that helps to bring that down they've got the goliath burger so they've got some of that crazy over the top stuff as well and then the Margarita Kitchen Cantina rounds out the food court here in the Carousel District side of Seaport Village. Oh, awesome. That's a, another positive vote for the San Diego Burger Company from Alyssa. Thank you. So, They've also got elote, churros, etc. And of course, margaritas, 945. And then as we make our way back towards the Hyatt here, we'll get our bearings again. Let's see the carousel. One of the things that would bring us over to this area in the past was Funko Fun Days. Uh, we would be lining up behind the Hyatt for it. And so we'd spend a good several hours in the sun waiting for that. But they've moved that to the Rady Shell this year. So I think that was the only thing that really brought us specifically to this exact area here. But I do like it. I love this historic carousel here. It's $5 for the carousel. A little bit of... San Diego histories there. They are cash only here. No bills larger than 20. This is a good time as a reminder that the convention center is no cash allowed for like food and drink and all of that. But you still have places such as this that are cash only. So good idea to have some cash on you while you're down here if you can. And we do have a variety of food spots up in that little spot there with Eddie V's and the Prime Seafood and all of that, but we're keeping it to, oh yeah, Cheesecake Factory, Carmel pointed out, but we're keeping to Seaport Village on this one here. 
If you missed also over on at sdccblog.com, there's an article about 30 Brew, the new kind of arcade addition to the Hyatt. Seems like a really fun addition there. We got to walk around there a few weeks back. It was a nice little touch of addition. Like I said, just brought, felt like a little bit of extra fun to the area, an old school arcade setting there, or as old school as you get in 2023. Yeah, I'm a, I prefer cash over cards myself, even though oftentimes I find myself more card heavy with no, like right now I have no cash on me, but I don't like the feeling of that. <laughs> All right, Hot Licks brings us almost back to the circle of where we were. We we're talking about those restrooms over there. All your hot sauce and other spicy things. Oh, and here's that hat shop again. That was one of a few spots here to get hats, clothing, any, all sorts of different souvenirs and fun sun stuff. Crazy shirts. All right, so we do have, I think at this point, we've got four or five videos on our playlist for this year. So if you are Comic-Con hungry and you haven't checked them out, you can find them there. We'll have another live later today, 6.30 Pacific time. And that's going to be kind of our weekly day in San Diego. We'll talk about the things that we've seen down here, some of the stuff we're working on, and some of the highlights of the news in the last week. So, Cash is king, at least from now. So many places around here going to cash. Yep, no cash agreed. Uh, we're not going to be streaming over there. They are kind of a casual dining brewery area, so not sure that they would love us going in there and doing that. So, But there are a bunch of photos there. We have them on social media as well, but if you head to stccblog.com, they've got a ton of stuff, like a ton, ton, ton of photos we took of everything there, so you can check it out. So thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you'll see a bunch of you at 6.30 later today, and we'll have more Comic-Con to talk about. So until next time, we'll see you in line somewhere.